Good evening and welcome to another episode of Jazz Tales. So glad that you could join us this week. I'm very pleased to welcome E. Sean Kaysani as uh, our guest this evening. Um, I've always wanted to play with Sean and I'm so glad he said yes to this. Sean has a very interesting story and we're going to be talking about it as we go along here. But just let, let me tell you a little bit about him. He was born in Kabul, Afghanistan and moved to the United States at age one jumped around a little bit, um, his father's different gigs that he had, and eventually ended up in Dover, Delaware, where he graduated from high school. Went to Berklee College of Music uh, in jazz composition and music education. He's in demand as a multi-instrumentalist and composer for nearly 30 years, sought after for his talents on guitar, bass, piano. He's not playing piano tonight, sorry. <laughs> and both uh, rubab, uh, rubab? and dutar, rubab dutar, Rubab dutar um, which are native instruments of, of his native Afghanistan. Um, some of the things that he's done, he's got uh, some recent uh, discography of Love Evermore with his wife Sharon Sable, Tim Bray, Andy La uh, Lalassis, and Larry Marshall, and More Than Happy, as well as M My Little Suede Shoes. And you can find out more about him at his website because he's got plenty of things that are going on. I'm really interested, in, and we will talk about it. Those of you that know this show know that we will talk about um, how you know, our artists that come and visit us uh, arrive. But I'm interested in, he has been an artist in residence and a creative fellow um, in, in numerous uh, places over the years, in, including in uh, France last year. And so I'm interested to talk to him about that. Uh, also, Clifford Brown Jazz Festival, Center City Jazz Festival, and uh, University of Delaware, many concerts. Uh, played uh, with Stevie Wonder, Ernie Watts, David Bromberg, Gary Granger, Sean Rickman, Ron Holloway, and Terry Tyler. Just a really well-rounded instrument. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my very special guest, E. Sean Kaysani. Sean, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. It's my pleasure to be here. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's wonderful to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so let's just jump right in and play. Okay. How about uh, we're going to do um, Beatrice by Beatrice. Sam Rivers. Yes. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Yeah, Sean. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. So I, you you watch the show, so you you know we, we say hi to people at this point. Hello. Yes. <laughs> um, Lou and Janet up in Nutley, uh, New Jersey, say have a great show. Fred and John. Uh, David and Netta up in uh, Montville, New Jersey, say good evening. Fred and Sean. Ed Refeld in Washington, D.C. I was listening to Sean on YouTube earlier and really liked what I heard. Looking forward to seeing him tonight. Wow, nice. Thank you, Ed. Um, Rena and Mike up in uh, Newmanstown, Pennsylvania. Hi, Fred, Sean, and all. And uh, Steve and Laurie in Easton, Pennsylvania say hi, Fred and Sean. Thanks for uh, tuning in, folks. We really appreciate it. Um, we're going to continue with uh, uh, one of the things that I, I, I liked about asking Sean was it's, it, he sent all the material uh, w way early, which means he was thinking about it. And I, I love that. I, you know, it just says a lot about a musician when they when they, you know, they, they're thinking about it and they're, and he kept sending tunes and I'm like, yeah, wow, we've got more than, than we need to choose from, which is wonderful. But he's, he's reharmonized tunes. He's done some interesting arrangements and we're just going to jump in. This is a really cool arrangement of uh, Charlie Parker's My Little Suede Shoes. Uh, Jody Miller says, Jody and Lou say hi. Oh, where's Jody? Jody? Uh, I saw the they're on Facebook. They're friends of yours. Yeah. Where, where are they located? Do you know? uh, I think Newark, Delaware. Newark. Ah. Welcome, Jody and Lou. Thank you. So here's a, uh, my little suede shoes by Charlie Parker.
Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. You're going to... You're going to stay on that one, or? It's hanging low. No, I'm not going to change this. Oh, okay. So um, the next, we're going to do uh, an original of yours. And so what's the story behind this one? Well, I mean, the, one of the gifts about being a musician is we don't always have to buy gifts for the ones we love. <laughs> <laughs> or at least that's my story. Um, uh, I wrote this a number of years ago. I have a beautiful niece named Danielle Marie, and, um, and I just wanted to, uh, I've written a couple of my niece's songs, I just wanted to write her a song, and um, I, I was exploring some harmonic and melodic things, and it just felt like a nice, she's a, a beautiful young lady, and I, I, I wanted to write something beautiful for her, and, and, uh, and she seems to like it, and she's actually getting married in December. Oh, wow. And I am even going to write an arrangement of this song to be played at her wedding ceremony. Oh, cool. It's a beautiful tune. I, I love it. Yeah, I'm excited to play it. Uh, Dave, um, up in Montville, New Jersey, says, Sounding great. Love the tune so far. Beautiful guitar tune. Oh, thanks. I, yes, I would agree, David. And it was, it's great to just put microphones on people, and they sound great. You know, <laughs> it's, uh, here we go.
What a beautiful tune, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, beautiful play tune. beautifully. Man, yeah. Uh, Ed says, loving the t this tune, so lovely and relaxing, yet with a foot-tapping beat. You guys are really tight, sound like you're sharing the same musical brain. <laughs> and Rena just goes, thank you, Rena. So um, those of you know um, that are watching know that um, I asked the same question of every artist, the very first question of every single artist, and that is, what is it that made you say, I just don't know anything else to do other than music, and, and more importantly, jazz? And that fits in with our mission here at, at Jazz Alive, is that you know we, we want to bring this music to our young people and introduce them, if they haven't been, or if they're really into it, hopefully give them more avenues to explore this music. That's what it, I mean, my idea of Jazz Tales was to let our young people, and we've got several watching tonight, um, hear exactly what it is that made the musicians that come through the door here be musicians and what work and all of that that goes into it. So what was that one thing or many things that you just said, yeah, music is it and I really need to play jazz? I, I grew up in a non-musical household, um, completely non-musical. Uh, my father, uh, every once in a while there would be Afghan music at parties and things like that, but neither one of my parents were music listeners. My father strangely did the, he, two artists he liked were Connie Francis and Dean Martin. Hmm. Um, I think part of it is because he liked the whole Rat Pack and like Dean sure. Martin, he liked the, the comedy side of like Mel Brooks was one of his fav most favorite people, movie maker. Um, but uh, they were very supportive of, of my interest in music from a really early age. And, um, and whether, I don't think they thought of it as a path to a career. Um, my father certainly didn't. He thought of it as something that's, that's nice to do and bring you enjoyment. But he, he did so almost Halfway through my college years, he was hoping I would switch to engineering or, or something more in line with what my family was doing. For me, it was piano first. Um, I kind of got fired from my piano lessons as an elementary school kid because I didn't like sight reading. I tried to make up everything myself. It happens to a lot of us. Um, then I played saxophone in middle school, and um, but I, I was given my first guitar in eighth grade, which by Guitar standards is, is kind of late to start. Um, but I really fell in love with the instrument. And I, I think that's a big part of, for musicians, what happens. You're just fascinated with the instrument. And this instrument was a way for me to connect with my family on geometry and math. Mm -hmm. uh, which I, I, I was good in school, but I just, I wanted to apply it here rather than at a, a day job, per se. Um, so I had my older brother was a good musical influence on me because um, for guitar it was the beginning it was ACDC Angus Young and um, uh, Jeff Beck although Jeff, Jeff Beck continues to be an influence um, my brother turned me on to King Crimson Wow and yes and things that were not cookie cutter pop rock tunes and then I think the first album was a West Montgomery album and it was an album. It was a vinyl album. And uh, I had never heard anything th like that in my life. And it, I loved it so much. It's, it, it's, it's the, the moment when you go, wow, that's the same instrument as I play? And so I always sat down and played along and tried to, I never tried to copy, but I always tried to just get that little bit of a sound like that person. Um, and, and so by my sophomore year of high school, uh, I liked the way you asked the question, um, about music's the only choice. I didn't know what a career was, and I didn't know what to car what I was going to carve out, and what exactly it would be. I just knew that a relationship with an instrument was what I wanted, and in a deeper way than just a casual kind of a, a weekend warrior kind of thing. So I wanted to go to Berkeley a year early. I wanted to go in my senior year of high school instead of go to high school. Um, that didn't happen because I fell in love with a young lady. Uh, but in retrospect, it worked out well because when I finally did get to Berkeley, I 
realized I would not have been ready my senior year of high school. And, and I've really just hit the ground running and I haven't, like, you know, Fred, you know, it's when you, when you get goosebumps, you still get goosebumps, not just performing music, but just listening to music. Um, I, um, I watched a little bit of um, an opera a couple nights ago that a friend of mine from a residency has written, and it was about, it was very heavy, it was about immigration, and, and, but it was only like a two minute thing, and I don't listen to a lot of opera, and there was a visual too, and I got goosebumps. Uh, um, those are the things, you can't, you can't manufacture that artificially. So I still get goosebumps, I still get excited about it, I still will be driving to the grocery store and thinking about music and when I get to play it again, and that's how I always remind myself I must have picked the right thing. Um, and, and we're having to kind of carve out new ways to do our career now. We all miss live music so much. Not just the performing together, but the camaraderie and all the friends. That, those are the bulk of our friends for most of us. Uh, but this is an example of something that um, is, is kind of like gives some relief. In the midst of all this. So that's, that's my short musical story. Well, yeah, and I'm being selfish because I get to play with all these great people. So, <laughs> wonderful story. Well, you know, uh, yes, uh, we'll, we'll elaborate on that in the next segment. Let's just go back to playing some music. And, and, and now we get to, to, to do some music that's, um, again, some of the things that, of his background. Um, he did an arrangement on a, a, a Jimmy Webb tune. Um, this is. Uh, by the time I get to Phoenix. Beautiful song.
<laughs> I love that effect on the end. That was yeah, very so cool. Exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Great arrangement, man. I, yeah. Yeah. And so now another great arrangement. This one, you're, you, uh, a great old standard by Johnny Green. Out of nowhere. Love it. Except in E. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. One of my, is this fun stuff? Yes. Oh, yeah. One of my favorite things um, to do, and most people seem to think it's nice. I get some complaints every now and then. Um, jazz standards tend to be in B flat, E flat, F, very rarely in E or A or D. Um, and one of the things I learned in school, I didn't take it seriously at first, but as I got older, I started to take it very seriously. To, to play around with keys. Not, not necessarily to learn every single song in all 12 keys, although you can do that too, but taking a familiar song like Out of Nowhere, which I really like, and putting it in a guitar resonant key. It's not just guitar friendly. G's a wonderful key on guitar too. A flat's a great key on guitar. But um, just hearing how it sounds in, in a key like E. And uh, so that's what we're going to do. Yeah, no, I think that's a, 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 a point that, you know, a fine point that, you know, I, I, I watch folks like Keith Jarrett or Bill Evans that mm -hmm. changed the keys specifically for the resonance of, resonance of the, the piano. Yeah. You know, a lot of Chopin stuff is D flat and G flat. It's right. dark, right. but it's dark for a reason, you yeah. know, and but quick story. One of my mentors early on, I was playing a gig in the Poconos. I was a young kid, and he called, I think, uh, Polka Dots and Moonbeams. Mm -hmm. Trombone player. This okay. guy was a trombone player. He called Polka Dots and Moonbeams, and he wanted to do it in B flat, which would be a perfect key mm -hmm. for the trombone. Mm -hmm. I only knew it in F. Mm -hmm. I rode to the Poconos from Lancaster, Pennsylvania with this guy. We played the gig all the way home. He lectured me on why you need to learn tunes in all different keys just because I mean that was a lesson that you could never you know I couldn't wait to get home because I was but he made his point and and for this to this day you know yeah. and this this I love it in this key on the piano too nice, it just right? brightens it up yeah. yeah out of nowhere
Great choice. Thanks. Great choice. Yeah. I'm going to switch guitars. Okay. Um, Ed says, fabulous. Raina says, great. Love it. Well, this next tune is a uh, tune, um, Pert Bacharach, and uh, a really cool, uh, a different arrangement on always something there to remind me. And you said just recently, um, or you know, you heard it as a you know a different rock tune, but didn't know that it was Burt Bacharach. Right. That, that, that was, the, was what a, you were telling me it earlier. It was a pop song in in the uh, early to mid '80s. Right. A band called Naked Eyes. Uh huh. Real synthesizer heavy, and uh, but I definitely liked it at the time. And uh, and I heard a recording of Charlie Hunter, great um, eight string guitarist, bass. Check him out. If you don't know who Charlie Hunter is, it's hard to describe what he does. He does a lot of duo recordings and gigs. And is with a singer, and it was like a slow, kind of shuffly version of it. And so I kind of stole some elements of that for mine. Cool. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you to set this one up. Okay.
Yeah, man. What a cool arrangement. Thank nice. you. Cool. Yeah, thank cool. you. Now I know how you have this towel here. Yes. Yes. Wonderful arrangement. Sean is working some real magic on that fretboard. Says Steve up in Easton, Pennsylvania. Yeah. So uh, we were going to talk about some mentors here. And you mentioned one of the great guitarists um, that we're going to talk about. Is, is that where you're going to start? Uh, or is, is there another, like, like we said, you know, there's so many great stories, you know, and I only have this short amount of time, but with the, in mind that we've got students here that might be trying to decide, you know, what, what, what they're going to do and all that. I, I think mentors is an important thing. So. And, and I don't know the dictionary definition of a mentor, but I think in the arts, if anything, the definition should include uh, a mentor could be someone alive or dead. Uh, we all have our, uh, by the time I heard Wes Montgomery, he had passed away many years before, um, and, but I still consider that a mentor. Because um, when you learn about somebody's life, it's not just about did they sound, were they a great musician. Uh, Wes Montgomery had a day job almost his whole life to support his family. It's about character, about like morals. And, but side note, I think we have to learn how to uh, uh, separate, in a way, those from enjoying somebody's musicianship. Because if we pay too much attention to somebody's personal life, per se, a Chet Baker or an Art Pepper or something like that, they made beautiful music. And I think it's possible to enjoy their music without uh, separating, without getting too tied up into were they a good person in their sure. life. And, and anyway, so um, Wes Montgomery really, and then I had a guitar teacher who introduced me to the music of Pat Martino. Um, and in its, in its way, Pat's playing and his music came from some similar influences and, and energies as Wes Montgomery, but there was a certain fire about it that I'd, uh, I'd never heard. And at that point, I'd listened to uh, Johnny Smith, um, uh, Grant Green. I'd listened to, uh, I, was, I was trying to get as many guitar listening influences as I could. There was something about Pat's playing that was just hypnotic and, and like, and, and, and fire energy. And, you know, you're very lucky in life if you're able to have one of those mentors that's alive and, and you get to learn from them. And I was lucky enough to study with Pat. Um, and you know, it's, I was so deeply into his theory of things and his playing, by the time I had my first lesson with Pat, I knew so much about his uh, philosophy and his approach to the guitar. That's not to say I didn't learn a lot. I learned a lot from Pat about um, being in the moment. Um, both musically and otherwise. And I, I owe a great debt to him. Um, after um, I studied with Pat, um, I definitely had some wonderful teachers at, at Berkeley. And I won't name names, um, but you know, my favorite teacher at Berkeley was a, a harmony teacher. And I, I studied advanced modal harmony with him, and I loved this class, and I loved him, I, I learned a lot. When I had an opportunity to hear him perform, he was a guitar player. It wasn't my cup of tea, hmm. and that was a that was a, an awakening to me. That I think a lot of people search out. They want to study with this guitar player. They're, they're a guitar player. They want to study with this guy because man, I love the way he plays. Um, it doesn't mean it's a good fit always in hmm. terms of a learning atmosphere. Some of the best teachers. That's it's it's because they take that aspect of of musicianship and a life in music extremely seriously. And I've always been passionate about teaching, as passionate as I am about playing. And it's you're lucky if you can weave a life of both. Um, and kind of my, my last mentor in, in, in the last 15, 20 years is Wolfgang Jutspiel, mm. a wonderful Austrian guitarist who, um, he, he just speaks to me through his, his music. He, he, he always has... No, that's not true. He didn't always. I saw him perform when I was at Berkeley in 92, and I didn't enjoy it. Hmm. 
I think it was a tribute to John Schofield, who's another great guitarist. But I remember very clearly leaving the concert, and the friend I was with thought it was unbelievable. And I was like, nah, it's not for me. Because if you, and, and side by side, I was so heavy into Pat Martino at the time, and where Wolfgang was coming from, just, just, it wasn't, it, it didn't jive with me. It, I remember the day I was driving in my car in the mid 90s, no, uh, yeah, mid 90s, and I heard a recording by Gabrielle Goodman, a singer. I think she's from Philly, I'm not mm -hmm. sure. And it was on, on Green Dolphin Street. I was just on the radio, just, and the guitar solo pulled me in so mm -hmm. much, and I loved it. And I said, I gotta find out who this guy is. And it was Wolfgang. And I had actually met Wolfgang at a party after the concert in Boston. And it, the fact that I had changed in terms of what, not saying that what he did when I was at Berkeley was the same exact thing, sure. but it was a language, it was a voice yep. that all of a sudden I couldn't get enough of. And, um, and, and he's a good guy. Like it's beyond just that he's a good guitar player. I studied with him in New York in the village and he was always very generous and gracious and, um, and I, I idolized him, but I did not get any sense of anything other than he just was happy to, to have me there taking a lesson. And that's how I like my students to feel. It's like, you trust me with helping you with some direction. I don't have all the answers. I'm still finding directions, but I, I, it's just an honor to, to sit with somebody who, um, who's paying you a little bit of money and they want you to help them with whatever they're doing. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it, man, there was a lot of heavy stuff that you said in there. Man, <laughs> yeah. I love the way that you prefaced it with you, the definition of mentor because it's not necessarily, I think we think that mentors is a positive thing. Mm -hmm. It not necessarily is always a positive right, thing. Right. Right. But I think if you take a lesson from it mm -hmm. and turn it into whether it be, there's a way of saying positive is I know I don't want to do that. Yes. I think that's, that's an important thing, yeah. And, and then I, I, I have so many piano players, just in particular, that right. same story. You know, when I was younger, I, I listened to them like, eh, right. you know, and then years later you go, man, all that time I could have been, but I wasn't ready back then. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. you gotta, you no. gotta be ready. Yeah. And, and uh, another thing I say, and this is less about mentoring, but just about the musical journey. Um, and I have a, a, a phenomenal former student of mine, Tim Wendell. He's actually doing a live stream, I think right now. <laughs> uh, he's in uh, Colorado, he's in Denver. Oh wow. And when I taught him, he was really into Fish, the band Fish. And I was doing everything I could to just help him find some other directions. Because everything, I would show him something, he would go, oh well, Trey Anastasio, he does a version of that. I said, well, okay. So. Um, but the, the bottom line is, he's a very modern guitar player, like modern harmony, modern lines. Uh, I don't consider, I, I don't know what I consider myself, but I'm rooted in organ trio things um, with some Afghan influences mixed in there. But we're all trying to get to the peak of Kilimanjaro, but our peaks aren't meant to be all the same. No. They, you know, it's okay. It's like I, when I, if and and if if it doesn't move you a sound, it, just because a group of people say this is the best, no, it's not what it's about. It's like it's about living a musical life, with like trying to keep an innocence about yourself and just and, and 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 finding finding what your voice is developing into. Yeah, well said. You know, I think I, I think what you're talking about with your last student there that there is a, is a point here that I'd like to make for the young folks that are listening, um, is that that doesn't mean you don't learn the vocabulary. It might not be your cup of tea, but you really need to have the vocabulary, I think, in order to speak all of this massive language, you know. Right. Um, and our next tune is, is, is a perfect point to this. When I was teaching at Shepherd College, now Shepherd University, but, when I was teaching at Shepherd College, one of my, my sax students came in and he said, uh, he said, you know, I, I really, I just want to go right to Coltrane. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. I said, I tell you what, 
and I'd heard him play, so I already kind of had an advantage. Mm -hmm. I said, if you can make it through the bridge to the tomb we're about to play, all the things you are, right. in particular, the last four bars of the bridge, mm -hmm. we'll go right to Coltrane. Right. Of course, when he got there, you know, he, he and I didn't set him up. I just, I just wanted him to think. Right. And he, I didn't have to say anything. He finished the song and he looked at me and says, yeah, okay, I get your point. Because right. he, he realized that he, he, there was vocabulary that was missing. That he needed to walk before he could run the marathon. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Great it's, points, Sean. Wow. And, and this is a per and, and what that's a perfect example of also, like we've never done this before, and I love when people are astounded, you know. And you've done this before. We do a, a performance, and it's like this band sounds amazing. How long have you guys been together? Well, this is our first gig. It's because we're always training to 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 be ready for the next situation. Yep. Um, we are like I, I, I call sometimes being a musician being an environmentalist <laughs> if I'm practicing I, I live in the city in Wilmington and if I'm practicing and I hear a car alarm you're not supposed to not be affected by that right. I, I don't think I get affected by it mm -hmm. like the way jazz is played in a concert hall is different than in a, in a dive bar and it should be because you're reacting to what's around you and, and and right. We all play. I think if we're sensitive, and and being sensitive comes with its ups and its downs. It means you're living in a world where where you you might be more sensitive than the average person, but that's what we need to to tie into the emotional aspect we're trying to yep. we're conveying through instrument. Yep. Well, uh, Ed says one of the things I love about these discussions is getting to hear about artists, and I can then check out on Apple Music. Looking forward to checking out Wolfgang. Nice. Uh, yeah. There you go. Yes. So here we go with a, a tune, All the Things You Are. Great standard.
Well, we have um, some people here that uh, we need to thank. Um, great call and response. Ed says, yes, I, I thought so as, w as well. <laughs> yes. It's, uh, that's one of those things that I think is, is that trusting thing. I, I really like and when I'm teaching master classes, the first time that I send it around, like, especially if it's a, like a big band, mm -hmm. and I just send it, uh, it's just a crash and burn because nobody thinks about as a relay race almost mm -hmm. that you're, you know, you drop the baton, it's all over. But everybody having that same sense of time, it's a great teaching yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, so we have um, several students watching. First of all, we'd like to thank um, John and Sherry Zimmerman up in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, who uh, sponsored your student, uh, Frank Morris. He's a guitar player yes, yeah. Wil in Wilmington? Uh, Lewis. Lewis. Oh, Lewis Delaware. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So he's going to Cape Henlopen in high school? He's, he's an adult. <laughs> ah. He is. He's I a see. kid at heart. I see. Okay. <laughs> well, welcome, Frank. Thank you. Um, next we have, uh, oh, Rena and... Uh, Rena Grimmer and Michael Patton up in Newmanstown, Pennsylvania. They sponsored James Hanna, who's a digital communications major at Lebanon Valley College. Um, and he plays in the, uh, uh, plays guitar in the jazz combos. And he's also a great photographer and digital artist. Thank you, Rena and Mike, for sponsoring uh, James. And finally, we have uh, this evening also uh, Netta and David Aragona up in uh, Montville, New Jersey, who sponsored Chilean uh, Cuthbert Iman, a guitar player here in Easton, Maryland, who's a member of the Easton High School Jazz Ensemble. Folks, thank you so much for sponsoring students. If you'd like to know how to do that, uh, go to our website. And there's a sponsorship page there. It tells you all what you need to do to make all of that happen. So um, since we just talked about students, um, last seg segment here, because we're running out of time. We've yeah. been having so much great much time. Fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, any advice? For, for students to, to? Um, well, I mean, it's hard to talk about music and studying music without talking about the vastness of the internet and all the music we have access to. Um, somebody said they're going to look up Wolfgang. Well, at the touch of your fingers, whole, his whole catalog you can listen to. So um, my advice would be um, it's a lovely resource, but step away from it as much as you can because you, you, you're trying to develop your personal relationship with your instrument. And if you're lucky, you have some good guidance with it. Um, but it can be overwhelming, the amount of music that's out there, and it can be too easy to compare yourself to him or her and what they're doing. What they're, you know, it's, Most definitely. It's, it, it, there's a, it's an old, I think it's a Les Paul quote, because uh, there's a story of Pat Martino as a kid going to a Les Paul concert. And, um, and, or maybe the other way around, I'm not sure. But essentially, Les Paul saying to Pat Martino, you know, you've done, you're, you've done something if your mother can recognize your sound on the radio. Hmm. And one of the greatest compliments I've ever gotten has been, you know, everything else aside, everything else, you have a voice. And the only way you find that voice is introspection. Being a musician can be a very lonely life in all the stuff, beautiful things we're talking about, playing music with other guys. These things um, are the reward for all the, the, the time on your instrument. If, if you happen to be somebody who doesn't need to put in any time on it, uh, you're uh, very fortunate, I guess. Yeah. But, but, um, and, 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 it, and it's not the same for everybody. I was not the eight or nine hours a day practicer. I never was. Um, I play every day and I always try to I always try to get better at what I do every day. But for me it's a con it's the balance of of working on the instrument but living life. Because life is where you 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 experience emotions and, and you and you feel things that you need that fuel to bring to your instrument. If it's all about being in a small white room with your instrument um, I, to me, that's, that's missing out on a big part of what a musical life is. And I think you can live a musical life and also it's, you can be in tune. We need all kinds of people in the world that don't touch an instrument, but they appreciate what we do. So I just say, dig in on your instrument. Um, don't think that you have all the answers ever, ever. Um, 
ever. Ever. <laughs> Don't ever think that you have all the, all the answers. The minute you do, stop. I watched a beautiful documentary. Can I plug a documentary? Sure. It's not musical, but it's, it's, it's a beautiful documentary called My Octopus Teacher. It's on Netflix, and it's about a, a guy in South Africa who basically was friends with an octopus huh. for a little over a year. And octopuses live just over a year. Hmm. And how he learned to empathize with the broader world and his family and his friends through this really like fascinating animal that is way smarter than we give octopuses credit for. Wow. So anyway, I love documentaries. That's, That's right. cool. So, so man, you, you've said a lot of really <laughs> heavy stuff, man. I, I'm so thankful that you, I, I knew, I mean, one time that we had conversations that we weren't joking around about everything. Right. You, you said a few things and I, I always stored that away that when I had the moment. So here you are, thank you. You're it's welcome. been thank a wonderful, you. a pleasure having you here. So unfortunately we only have time for one more. Which one will that be? Let's you wanna do, do Sandu? Sandu, Sandu yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is a Sandu, it's a blues written by um, Clifford Brown. And, I, and I, I, I always try to sneak in a Clifford Brown song because he was from Wilmington, Delaware, which is where I live. And he was an amazing musician who moved out of this world way too soon. Um, but um, I like to do play a song just a tribute to him. Good.
It's been a blast having you here. Thank you both for a great evening. Uh, says Rena and uh, Mike. Uh, Jody says this was was great, guys. Thoroughly enjoyed your music um, and conversation. Folks, thank you so much. Sean, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, thank you. Fred. We uh, next week we have the last person um, for session number three of Jazz Tales, and that is trumpeter Tim Stanley. He's an outstanding trumpeter. Uh, you're gonna love his fire. He just brings a lot to it. He says a lot with that trumpet. So I hope that you'll join us next week, um, next Wednesday. Thank you so much, folks. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next time.